Hi, and welcome to your pre-course review on Level of Awareness and Glucometry. My name is Tracy Gaunt, and I'm one of the Regional Educators for the Southwest Ontario Regional Base Hospital Program. This review is intended to be a basic review of level awareness and when it's appropriate to take a blood glucometry. The learning objectives for this review are to identify and describe common reasons for decreased LOA, discuss when a blood glucose should be completed, describe the common signs and symptoms of hyper and hypoglycemia, and appropriately apply the hypoglycemic medical directive to a variety of patient care scenarios. Level of awareness, the word altered refers to a GCS that is less than normal for the patient. The word unaltered refers to a GCS that is normal for the patient and may be a GCS of less, less than 15. A review of syncope. The fit, faint, or fatal presentation conducted by Dr. Samir Mal and Dwayne Cattell on June 29, 2012 provided paramedics with a better understanding of syncope, seizures, and their potential causes. The challenge when evaluating a patient who had a syncopal episode is determining whether there is a life-threatening cause. One of these causes could be hypoglycemia, which is treatable by paramedics. For further examples of syncope and seizures, please review the fit, faint, or fatal presentation. Causes of decreased LOA can range from seizure, syncope, hypoxia, hypovolemia, vasovagal, situational, volume depletion, cardiac, and even unexplained. Seizures are frequently mistaken for syncope. Between 5 to 15 percent of syncope cases are actually seizures. Syncope, chasing causes. Let's look at a case scenario. You have a 75-year-old male who passes out while eating at a local restaurant. The patient was unresponsive for several minutes prior to crew arrival. The patient now has a GCS of 15 and declines treatment or transport. Would you perform a blood sugar on this patient? Answer would be yes you would, given that he had a syncopal episode prior to crew arrival. Chasing causes. 26-year-old female found in the bathroom by her boyfriend after she awoke to use the toilet. Patient is slightly confused but awake. There's no past medical history and she is a marathon runner. Would you perform a blood sugar on this patient? The answer is yes, given she has an altered LOA. Syncope. 50-year-old male passes out while standing at a hockey arena for the past 30 minutes. He was watching the game. Patient is now awake but complaining of dizziness when assessed by the crew. Would you perform a blood sugar on this patient? The answer is yes, this patient warrants a blood glucose given the history of a syncopal episode prior to crew arrival. Ask Mac. A question was asked on October 2012 regarding blood glucose levels. Question was, I've noticed a number of paramedics do blood glucose testing based on the history of an event and not how the patient is presenting at the time of assessment. For example, history of fainting, period of unresponsiveness, diabetic with nausea, vomiting, etc. If the patient is not presenting with any of the indicators outlined in the hypoglycemic protocol, should we be testing the blood glucose of this patient? This question was posed on MAC. The answer to the Ask MAC question. The answer to the question posed regarding blood glucose from October 2012 was, this is a terrific question. The base hospital supports paramedics performing blood glucose testing in clinical situations where hypoglycemia could be the underlying or precipitating event. Classically, hypoglycemia is characterized by the clinical signs noted in the indication section of the hypoglycemic medical directive such as agitation, altered LOA, seizure, symptoms of stroke. Given the myriad of presentations of hypoglycemia, it is possible that a patient may be hypoglycemic and yet have other features, such as intense diaphoresis along with a sluggish behavior, etc. To answer your question, given the above, the base hospital is supportive of paramedics performing blood glucose testing of patients where hypoglycemia is suspected in clinical situations beyond those solely described by the medical directive. Paramedics should utilize their critical decision-making skills and document their rationale for performing this blood glucose sampling on their ACR. A review of hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. 
Hyperglycemia or high blood sugar is almost always a result of diabetes mellitus and by itself represents no immediate threat. It can cause several physiological changes that can have serious long-term effects. It can also cause strain on the cardiovascular system, kidneys and other organs resulting in CHF and renal failure. Hypoglycemia is also referred to as insulin shock and also commonly known as low blood sugar. It is the most common complication for patients with diabetes and may be life-threatening. Blood glucose levels usually remain fairly constant, but can fluctuate depending on diet, exercise, and other related factors. Hypoglycemia can occur as a result of taking too much insulin, not eating enough food, or a combination of both. The brain is the biggest glucose consumer. It uses approximately 25% of your total body glucose. Any shortage of glucose will greatly reduce your brain metabolism, resulting in neurological or psychiatric symptoms. Slide 11. Signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia. Hyperglycemic patients can experience excessive dehydration, leading to excessive thirst and extreme hunger. Typical blood glucose levels in the hyperglycemic patient will be greater than 25. Late stages of hyperglycemia can include Kussmaul respirations, postural hypotension, and coma. Hypoglycemia typically has a rapid onset because the brain is dependent on and sensitive to blood glucose levels. This also explains behavioral and LOA changes when the blood sugar is low. Typical blood sugar levels are less than four in your hypoglycemic patient, and late stages can lead to tachycardia, seizure, and unconsciousness.